I move? Thank you. Uh, also, we got an agenda to approve the minutes for September the 9th. Thank you, board meeting. The the motion for approval. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Approval minutes for October 3rd, 2013, board meeting. Second motion to approve. Wait a second. Yes. Uh, January still, I, I asked. <laughs> Good evening. I call to order the Board of Commissioners meeting November 7, 2013 at 703. Those who would please join us in the prayer and the pledge. <laughs> to Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious day that you've given us. We thank you for the beauty of the season and the change. Lord, I ask your guidance and direction in this meeting. We ask that all things be done in glory of you. We ask that the correct things be done for the citizens and the betterment of Fairview. We ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Second. I have alterations of deferring 8C, additions of recommendations, discuss and or action of recommendations from the audit workshop, and addition of discuss and or action of approval of the audit of June 30th, 2013. Would there be any other additions? Um, I'm trying to find the, the location on here, Mayor. The one thing I was going to bring up for the contribution to the school, the high, the high school college, I'd like to postpone that, but I'll speak briefly on it at the end of the meeting. D. Remove that, please. 8D being deferred. Yes, please. Any other additions or deletions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next item is the citizens' comments. We have this evening Ms. Leslie Staley. Would you please approach the podium? You have three minutes to share or deliver your comments or questions. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. Um, 
I'm here to speak about um, some citations that have been given to me recently um, from the city codes department. Um, unfortunately, it seems to be um, rather convenient that after speaking about my opinion and things on the chickens, um, shortly thereafter, I have been cited for several different things on my property. Um, one of which were the chickens, which I took care of. Um, the second one was the pool in my backyard. Uh, the reason why I want to bring that up first is because the pool sits directly behind my house. It is not visible at all. And there's like this little bitty crease in between my garage and my home that you can see only whenever I have backed out of my driveway. And there was a very intense picture from the front of my neighbor's property to get that because it's a very odd place. Um, so it, it kind of seemed as if I was being picked on whenever that happened, um, which by the way, I'm not out of codes for because I've had it for over eight years. Um, also, uh, I received a citation today um, and this all has happened within a three month span, probably even less than that. Um, and this one was for an abandoned hot tub, which I have with me if any of you would like to see it. Um, and basically it just states that if it's not removed, then I will get a misdemeanor and um, uh, there will be a lien put on my home, which is ridiculous because this hot tub, first of all, has been on my property for well over a year and it just happens to be brought up now. So it just seems like, you know, it's kind of convenient that I keep getting these letters. Um, this hot tub means a lot to me because, first of all, it was a gift and um, it's kind of, you know, with my religious beliefs as well, because my daughter was baptized in that hot tub, and um, it does work. It's not abandoned. I just have taken the plumbing out so it doesn't freeze and get ruined over the winter because it, it's not hooked up. There's no water in it right now. Um, and the reason for that is because my home was built in 1970, and I have to change the breaker box until I can, you know, I can't plug it up until then. Um, so anyway, in saying all of that, it's just rather disturbing because we do have the freedom of speech in this nation and I felt like you know I was doing the right thing by standing up for what I believed in for the city and I have now been cited for several different things on my property and I don't even know what to do about this hot tub because it's it's not going anywhere I mean I'm just gonna be honest with you I will find a way because it means that much to me um, I know that sounds silly but that's just what I believe so I just wanted you all to be aware of that because as a citizen, I feel like it's disturbing that I start coming to these meetings and I start standing up and I wanna be involved in the city and, I, and then this has happened to me. And I see the city codes department drive by my home like almost every day. So it, it just feels like there's a little bit of um, coincidences happening there. So just wanted you guys to be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jim Power, would you please approach the podium? Welcome. See if I could ask a question. I have a question. Last week you passed the chicken ordinance. Commissioner Sutton asked before you passed this ordinance, if, and he asked Mr. Lovorn over here, if this in fact only allowed 20% of the citizens of this town to have chickens and therefore 80% couldn't, and yet you passed it. I don't understand how you can pass anything that will only allow 20% of the people in the town to receive that benefit. I, I don't get it. I, I, I can't get it. And every one of you voted for it, so every one of you told 80% of us that we was either our yard wasn't big enough, we was in the wrong place for some reason we couldn't have chickens. Two, I can tie, two, two commissioners voted against it. I can tie a dog up in my front yard on a chain and hope that he doesn't get off and kill a child, but I can't have a chicken. I don't understand it. There's no lot requirements for this dog. You can live in an apartment and have a dog. Chickens are nasties. Where do you think these people take their dogs to? They walk them up and down the street. What is that? That's not nasty? Do they pick it up? I doubt most of the time they do. I've watched people walk their dogs 
usually they don't have a bag with them. And yet the chickens are nasty. And only 20% of the people can have them. I don't understand it. I don't. Thank you for your time. I appreciate your comments. I do want to make a comment because I don't think the 80 and 20, and when it was addressed, I didn't comment on it, but I don't know that that's an accurate number. But we did go from zero, to if indeed the 20%. And if that be the status of where we're starting, the difference is being told no in the city has changed because there was some allowances allowed in the alteration of the ordinance. I just on uh, one of the comments uh, Vice Mayor Johnson made, check the records back on the voting on that particular act. It wasn't every single one of those. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is awards and recognition. Would there be any from staff? Mayor, Vice Mayor. comment on how well coach department works with their uh, request when inspections were needed started with the young lady in the office all the way down to the inspections and getting them done on a prompt matter he also stated that if we ever had a project again he would love to work in Fairview because of the way the coach department has treated him tonight I'd like to recognize Don LeVorn would please stand up Darren Hall, Greg Dwyer, John Bledsoe. Y'all would stand up. Thank you. The next thing I have in recognition is the hard work that our public works department does. We actually have a movie tonight prepared by Nick Day on a progress report from the beginning until where we're at right now. We still have a binder to go down, but we had a section in the uh, one of the subdivisions that it had the orange cones up for over three months. We had a road that was collapsing. So I'd like to turn it over to Nick Day right now, and then after that, I will recognize all the boys in, in the Public Works Department. Okay.
Nick Get Dave. In the mic. Get in the mic. Oh, I'm sorry, not sure sorry. everybody in the back okay. here. Uh, Nick, done the, the before and after during the progress. You notice how hard of work it is, the, the cutting of the pavement, the digging of all the gravel. We actually had 40 loads come out of that stretch out there alone. That is now it's, was it went to the out parcel. It's already been leveled out. And that's, you know, one of the sites, the only site that we have when something like this comes up. But Nick done that. Then with the advice of Don, please stand up. Keith Paisley, how to go about this. I was new at this to learn. But the boys have done the hard work. Todd Bradford. Blake Ayers. Nick Green. Randy Bay. Very good, thank you. Thanks to all the persons who work behind the scenes to make our roads safe, thank you. Any other awards or recognitions this evening? Item number five is public announcements. We have any public announcements this evening from staff? The admission testing is Monday and Tuesday from 7.30 to 12, and Veterans Day is Monday. City Hall will be closed. Thank you. Okay. Any from the board? Um, Fairview Middle School is having a event, some kind of... They have a pancake breakfast in the morning. Yeah, pancake breakfast on Saturday, and I think they're going to have some holiday shopping, booths, and stuff like that. Also, I know everybody's been waiting all year for this. Uh, it's finally time for the uh, chitlin and chicken dinner over at the Lions Club. So break out your, uh, your, your aprons and stuff and come on over. It's all you can eat. It's going to start Friday, Saturday, I'm sorry, at 4 o'clock. Last was about 7 or 8 o'clock. $10 for adults, $4 for children. $5 for children. It all goes to a good cause for testing. They tested over 200 children last year through the Lions Club for their vision. So it goes to a great cause. But they also have the chicken. Uh, pies and everything else you need to go with that. So please, please come up and enjoy that. I don't think there's anything else other than you're going to say something about Marshall in the morning. To, tomorrow night is the first round playoff game for the football, and Fairview will be hosting the Harpeth Indians. 7 o'clock kickoff. Go Yellow Jackets. I will make a statement that our Congressman Marsha Blackburn will be visiting the Fairview area tomorrow. She will be visiting with the Fairview High School and selected uh, students that are in history and government and also at the Fairview Middle School. So that is uh, just in her rounds. She's going to be passing through Fairview, but while she's here, we're going to get to um, do maybe some Q&A with the students and teachers of the high school and the middle school. Any others? Item number six is the approval of the minutes. The minutes presented uh, for the September 19, 2013 Board of Commissioner mm -hmm. meeting. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Item 6B is the minutes for the October 3, 2013 Board of Commissioner meeting. Number approved. Second. First and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion approved. Item number 7A, old business. Second and final reading on Bill 2013-22. Bill number 2013-22, ordinance number 817 is an ordinance to for the amendment of the City of Fairview, Tennessee budget for fiscal year 2013-2014 budget. Move for approval. Second. First and second discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item 7B, discuss and or take action on History Village Triangle School. Commissioner Bissell. Thank you, Mayor. Pass those down for me, Commissioner Carroll. And then I've got some extra for the head table here. Hold on, if you wouldn't mind, before we. Some of this information may be a bit redundant, but uh, 
wanted to bring everyone up to speed on what Dr. Rice and I have been working together, and then I've got some updates on a couple of things. So uh, I believe I shared at the last meeting. Uh, Don, could you go ahead and punch it in one for me? That the first thing, go back one, please, sir. Dr. Rice and I met was we went through his books and uh, did kind of an internal audit ourselves and then we compared those with the financial officer's books to, uh, and this is just a recap, uh, to date the project has run seven years now, Dr. Rice, is that correct? Seven years. And with 143000 plus some change income, you can see where that came from. Uh, $106,000 has been spent. Uh, he currently has about 37000 in the bank, of which he's obligated 9000 So there's $28,000 roughly in the fund that he has, and this is some of the things that they plan to use that money for. If we could go to the next slide. There was a lot of discussion about just exactly how much money the city had spent, and I heard everything while I was, while I've been a commissioner, saying from 80 to 150,000. But best that we could come up with is this is pretty much how much the city has invested in the Triangle School project to date. Of that 98,500, there is still some money that has been obligated but has not actually left our hands. So we've actually spent about 85,000. The project goal that Dr. Rice and I are working toward is that the Triangle School uh, and the post office will be open for public visitation as a museum uh, to coincide with our July 2014 Independence Day celebration. And this is just kind of, uh, Alan doesn't draw well with his hand, so he kind of uses the computer. So this is uh, just kind of a conceptual drawing of, of the layout of the Triangle School uh, and where the parking lot might go. Uh, that'll be worked out, uh, hopefully, between the uh, city and Dr. Rice. And then the other two buildings are the post office and the medical clinic that they're working on moving at this time. And it's not to scale. There's a more elaborate drawing, uh, but I couldn't get it to reduce down to get it on the PowerPoint, so I apologize for that. Uh, kind of out of step in retirement with PowerPointing here. This is uh, the task list that Dr. Rice and I have come up with, and the items highlighted in yellow are the items that we tentatively agree that should be the city's responsibility to secure and take care of. Uh, I apologize on the handouts. They, I guess the yellow faded out on us at the copy machine. But uh, the task ahead, uh, securing the electrical wiring plan from an engineer and securing the wiring contractor and complete the wiring, Dr. Rice and Lisa Anderson are working with Mitch Dowdy, Dowdy Electric. In fact, they have a meeting uh, in the near future where uh, Mr. Dowdy is working on securing the uh, uh, electrical engineer and will be working to get some of the materials donated and, and possibly some of the labor donated. And while we expect that we will have to come to the city for some funding, we do not expect it to be a, a significant amount of money in terms of what it would, uh, you know, if we went out retail to try to hire an engineer and, and do the electrical work. So we'll keep you all informed. Uh, we're all aware of Mr. Clark and the HVAC system that's waiting on the first two things. Uh, security lighting, uh, as we install this stuff and start to move things into the building, we're obviously going to need some outside lighting so that uh, we are we're able to do that. Uh, that won't be a lot uh, compared to some of the other lighting efforts that we've had. So uh, insulation, window restoration, the window restoration, if you haven't been by lately, you really should because the windows that have been installed uh, make it look really nice. Uh, the parking lot, uh, the sidewalks, uh, the footbridge, and the landscaping uh, is all things that we've tentatively agreed the city could handle using internal resources. That would not be something we would need to do until the, until the springtime, but that is something that we do on a regular basis for other city buildings and around, so we should be able to handle that. 
The rest of the items, the interior painting, the restoration of the stage steps and interior doors, gutter downspouts, and the installations of furnishings and memorabilia, all of that is well under control by the uh, Historical Association. And so the city uh, really is not involved in those processes. And then, of course, the grand opening celebration will be a joint effort as we try to tie it all in, into that. Uh, we, we're not asking for any money tonight, so don't anybody holler. Uh, but these are the things that we've kind of looked at, and I, I briefly touched on them on that other slide. These are the things that we will probably be looking at uh, for the city to fund. Uh, it's not a significant amount of money, especially we can do it ourselves. The, the installation and cost of the electrical is, is part of it, and then we'll just have to see about the insulation if, if there's a need for us there to, to step up. But generally speaking, we are getting, from a city standpoint, we are getting to the end of the process in terms of, of funding the Triangle School and getting it open. Uh, perpetual care is the, my last slide, or next to last slide. And generally speaking, this is kind of what we're looking at. Uh, the city, of course, will maintain the grounds as we currently do. Security patrol, once the lights get up, the park rangers, uh, it would be my suggestion, seeing how I do that too, to be, uh, we can go out there and, and patrol that park along with it, and of course, then you have the utilities of the building. The historical association would be work on having a volunteer staffing and, of course, taking care of and rotating the educational memorabilia that would be in there. Uh, we don't expect any major repairs, but, you know, if something would happen that was a major repair, then we would just have to, to work that issue as it came up. Uh, it's, it's impossible. We're hoping with new wiring, new HVAC, new windows, paint, everything, it's kind of the, we, the work we've done on the structure, we're hoping that everything will be fine. So that's just an update of where Dr. Rice and I are on it. The next action will be uh, once he completes his conversations with Mr. Dowdy and gets us some idea of what the gentleman that's working on the windows is, is continuing to work those processes. There's not really anything that the city needs to be doing at this particular time on, on this project. Uh, I, Dr. Rice or myself would be happy to try to answer any questions where we are with it. Dr. Rice, if it's okay with the mayor, uh, do you have anything that you would like to add to this? No, oh, sir, except, except that in, a, in addition, we are at, as, looking also on the city. Uh, Come up to the microphone so everyone can oh, hear yes, you yes, at sir. home. I'm sorry. Yes, sir, in addition to uh, the Jingo Post Office and the Triangle School, as Commissioner Bazell just mentioned. Uh, we also in, are in the process of doing some demolition work on the, uh, the medical clinic at Boone Street. The back two rooms have been removed, and tomorrow the porch will be removed. All the sheetrock and everything on the inside has been removed, so it's back to the original beaded ceiling type walls and ceiling. Uh, flooring will be added, uh, and, and a second layer of flooring will be put down, uh, and before long it will be moved. Um, well, I, I learned this evening of a mover, that a mover must have a million dollar liability insurance. Uh, this is something I, I didn't know, so we may have to locate a, a, a different mover but, uh, and, and that will probably I increase our cost somewhat, but uh, we'll get it done. Do you have any questions? Dr. Rice, is it true that you're starting a new company, one man in a truck? <laughs> I've seen you moving several loads out of that house out there. I didn't know it could hold oh, so much. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. I, I've worked about 16 days. Uh, incidentally, Mr. Walter Hethcote, who lived there 28 years, is now living very in a, very comfortably at the um, oh my goodness it's in Centerville. Centerville. Yeah, he's living in Centerville in the apartment behind the large Church of Christ there, Tulipwood. And last weekend I was in Centerville and went by and saw him. 
and how pleasant it is to see him in a nice, clean, warm environment with a new couch, a new lazy boy, a new bed, and a new table. Uh, he was watching TV and enjoyed my conversation. And uh, I have a few things we found, not many, in the structure that I'm going to return to him, including a rather large family album, which I know he'll be pleased to get. Uh, the place was in deplorable condition as far as appearance. Uh, four of us spent uh, three long and <laughs> nasty dirty days uh, removing the contents and the carpeting and the linoleum and so forth, just getting it so that uh, uh, we could begin doing other things. But we're looking forward to getting that structure. We do have a very interesting collection of medical memorabilia, as I mentioned earlier, some of which belong to the Bowie family. Uh, examination chair, just interesting, interesting items that will go there. Uh, it will be a show place as well as the other structures. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you for your dedication. Would there be any action at this time? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for your presentation. 7C, discuss and or take action on Bowie Park Forestry Project. City Manager Hall. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Keith and I have been to this test site uh, right now. I have some concerns safety-wise uh, how these logs are going to be dropped um, and how the tops of the trees are going to be chipped and this type of thing. Uh, in this 3.2 acres, there's over 250 trees in there that has to be cut and dropped. And I want to meet with the logger myself and see what his plan of attack is to um, how, how fast he's going to do this, how slow he might do it, and how we can address where the logs do drop because uh, I'm concerned about the safety of our, our men doing the chipping and the next thing I'm concerned about the children that will come out and re reforest the, the uh, plants next year. And I don't want them crawling over top of several logs stacked on top of one another. So I will meet with the uh, logger and see what his plan of attack is. And but tonight, for any action on it, uh, I'd like to defer it until I get this taken care of. I, I do have some safety issue concerns with it before I... Uh, ask y'all to go forward with it. Thank you. Item 7D, discuss and or take. Do I have to vote on him asking to defer? No, we don't. I didn't think so. D, D discuss and or action on King Road pra Paving Project. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I've asked for this to forego the bidding process. Uh, I believe the road is in severe shape. And I think it's only going to get worse over the winter. This is one of our highly traveled roads in the city. It, uh, a lot of our children go to and from school there, and uh, as well as parents taking their children to and from school. Uh, so I'd like y'all's opinion on whether we can go forward with the repaving project uh, without a bid process. I do have a good bid that we I've discussed with. Uh, other people that work for the city and they seem to think we've got a good good bid for it If you want to know what that bid is it's 31,000 and that's to mill it two inches of top layer hot mix and the uh, striping and uh, It's going to take approximately four weeks to get it on the schedule. So At that there's a reason because you know the asphalt plants do close down uh, as soon as the weather breaks to and right now we're lucky that it's still open so that's the reason i'm asking for this mayor if we could just get the attorney to address the fact on how we can go around the bid process for this being an immediate need i'll be happy to address that the state law and the section of our charter does allow uh for accepting bids without uh, i'm sorry for uh proceeding without going through the bidding process in uh, instances where uh, that, that there is some concern about uh, it could be public safety, it could be in this instance about not being available until next spring, uh, what it requires is 
uh, written um, justification from the city manager to the board uh, for a request to forego the bidding process, which I assume you have that, that the city manager's uh, request. There is also, it has to be a resolution passed by the, uh, the board. I know you have the resolution. It has to be passed unanimously uh, or it, it fails. Uh, I, have, I would request, and we have a place on the resolution, uh, I would request if you, uh, when you vote on this, if you would have a roll call vote so the recorder can record the uh, vote because the statute requires that the vote be recorded. Uh, it does not say uh, that it has to be a resolution per se. It says they have to, the board has to, to, res to have a resolution and it has to be passed unanimously. It doesn't say sp specifically to prepare a resolution. I guess the minutes would be adequate, but I don't want to take any chances, so that's the reason I prepared the resolution. So in time frame, you have a four-week time frame, which would be the seventh before they would get it on the on their schedule to, schedule to, to do. do yes ma'am they, they agreed to do the milling one day and the paving the next is this Tennessee Valley no sir it's, it's Eubanks Eubanks oh did someone say Tennessee Valley <laughs> okay Sorry. and what is the thought of school traffic and diverting of school traffic I mean that would be my could it my be first done question. during the Thanksgiving holiday when no not if no. well if they could do it within yeah. three weeks maybe yeah. maybe if they could do it in three weeks but uh, if they're four yeah. weeks out then that's like the 10th of right. or 7th or so of yeah. December yeah. when we when we did it before they they worked around the school schedule of school starting and school ending they worked in they and they they started late and they stopped early so mm -hmm. i'm sure we can work with them on that and then you said something about the plant closing maybe mid-december so you can see say, right now we have one shot to run or yes yes ma'am times missed mm -hmm. I, I think also with tennessee valley don you can correct me if i'm wrong they have an option whenever they want to open that plant and close it especially if it's one of their contracts that they're working on am i correct don as long as the temperature is right it has to be above 40 degrees and before that's, they can. that's well within a normal temperature for that time of year am i right most normal time. yeah okay but they, they do have an option to open it back up if, if the weather permits them to do it so it's not like it's closed down from december the 15th till february the 15th absolute <clears throat> We've discussed the road projects. We've discussed the necessity. We've discussed the priority of which roads. King Road has always been uh, kind of one of the top priorities. We discussed getting the asphalt down and trying to do it before the fall season is out. So this is not new discussion. This is expediting a discussion that did not come to fruition. Yes, ma'am. And your time frame is a short yes, gap. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I believe that the discussion goes back to 2011 yes yeah. yes it's 2011 and this yeah. is I've had many 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 complaints over the last few weeks and I actually have driven down it twice in the last week and a half and it's in bad shape what are the wishes of the board move for approval second first and second any discussion Calling as uh, requested by city attorney. Are you going to call it out or you want me to? I need to read the caption to the resolution, oh, please. I'm so sorry. Resolution number 20 13 is a resolution authorizing the repair of King Road without obtaining competitive bids for the repairs pursuant to Fairview, Tennessee Charter Section 6 19 104, subsection C. Okay. Call for roll call vote. Aye. 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 
Mayor, I would also like to request that a copy of the city manager's letter requesting uh, the uh, procedure without bid be attached uh, to the resolution and placed in the file with the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Okay. Next on the agenda is 7E, discuss and or take action on the CCC gun range. City Manager Hall. Thank you. Uh, Chief Harris and I made a trip down to the uh, WDC and met with Mike Adams uh, regarding the uh, contract that was up for renewal. Uh, made a few changes, but not anything that's major. It's just we're getting our own gate where we can enter the um, uh, gun range. And the only thing they've asked is for us to keep it cut and um, make sure that the drum out there is, is kept empty that's been, you know, had some trash in it. Their uh, attorney, Ben Region, is going to draw up the contract, and as soon as we get the contract, I'll present it to the board for your, for your signature. So there'll be no action? No action tonight. Just to report. Any comments or questions from the board? Okay, well, we need to make any changes in our current liability policy. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Good there. Did they currently cut the grass, or was this something that we were... Um... We were probably a little lackadaisical on, you know, and hadn't been doing it as often as we should, but, uh, you know, we assured them that it would be taken care of, and then we made sure that uh, uh, the... Uh, trash barrel would be emptied and taken care of there too. So that was the only thing that they, and that was just from Mike Adams' observation. You know, but he agreed to let us have our own gate to go in and, you know. And uh, make, the only other thing that he did ask was that we notified the people at the, uh, the sewer plant when we went in to let them know that we were having our practice. Mayor, if I could add uh, something. Um, I'd, I'd like to publicly uh, state that, that uh, Mike Adams and, and Ben Region were really uh, uh, very good to work with in getting this set up. Uh, I've talked to the city manager, and actually uh, I was down there on another, for another reason talking with, with Mike, and I called Ben uh, before that time and asked him about this, and, and he and I agreed that it probably would be better if Mr. Hall and, and the chief would go down and talk with, with uh, their uh, manager. And he said, you know, we were sitting there talking about it, just Ben and I, and said, well, you know, if our people are satisfied and your people are satisfied, then we can get this thing worked out. And before he and I spent a lot of time on it, let them agree to what they want. And then it's pretty simple for he and I to get terms and, and they'll send it to me and this type of stuff. And we'll get the agreement worked out. And it sounds like it, it worked real well. I conveyed that to. Mr. Hall, and, and uh, sounds like it, it worked well. Great, thank you. Any other comments? Item 7F, discuss and or take action on Fairview City projects. Because my name's next to it, we'll talk about it, but I don't have a list, nor do I have a Kevin anymore. <laughs> so at that point, unless someone has specific comments about specific projects that have not already been discussed tonight, the floor is open. Questions on any? I would like to ask one question. Uh, last meeting, we discussed the, um, the denying or the not accepting any of the bids for the Greenway when Will was here, and the vote was to turn the Greenway grant back. My question would be, has any paperwork, legalities, conversation, or anything taken place on that discuss that vote? Can anyone share anything with me? Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, I know Will was going to contact uh, the contractor that had the um, low bid and let him know that the bids were rejected. Uh, I think he was to prepare a letter to send back to the, um, to the grant uh, provider to let them know that we had was going to turn the grant back over. Okay. I believe there could be additional discussion. So at this point, my comment on that particular item, there'll be no action um, on the city projects, but I would like to um, ask everyone to look at their calendars for a workshop, project workshop. 
at 5.30 on the 21st of November prior to the next Board of Commission meeting. Does anyone have any opposing thought? <coughs> Giving uh, Mr. Hall opportunity as he's presented very, um, very well this evening some of the projects as he's getting his hands around them, it'll be just another opportunity for us to uh, sit around the table and discuss some of the um, pieces of the projects. I think timely it would be good, or he may have questions for us as well, and we may want to revisit the list and see its um, priority as well as see how, what we are focusing on and what maybe we want to put in priorities. So it's just going to be projects in general, yes, just sir. a discussion? Okay. The project list and everybody kind of wrestle around, and if we leave the room with everybody champion one, that would be grandosa. Can everybody make that that time mm -hmm. and day? I don't see a problem there. Could we set that in motion? I look at ladies because I'm not sure your say five? directions. 5.30? Before the next meeting. Yes, ma'am. The 21st of November for project workshop. I probably Anybody will involved? Not, I probably will not be here, but it does not have anything to do with the time or anything. It's just my surgery next week, so. Will you be at the meeting next week? I, I'm having a hip replacement next week, so I'm going to be out for a while. Okay, sir. Well, he'll be absent for workshop and meeting as well, so we'll address that. Everybody else is okay? We'll move forward? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mayor. Yes. I do have an update on the um, Roadscapes grant. Uh, okay. We, we did uh, get a notice to proceed to design. Uh, contacted John Lavender with Los Associates. Uh, he has told me that the design is pretty much complete, uh, but they're going to have to uh, do uh, excess land um, reports, and said so that could take till spring of next year, um, and that uh, Sean Bible, the the, uh, the that oversees the uh, the roadscapes grants, uh, likes to see plantings done in the fall, so that they would uh, probably get everything together so they would have a fall planning in, in 14. Um, but the contract that we have with um, the state uh, expires 25th of April next year. Uh, so I've got to contact uh, Monique Hazelwood to see if we can get another extension past the, the 25th of April uh, so we can make the fall planning and still be under contract. Um, and talking to John Lavender, he said he didn't think that there'd be a problem getting an extension on that contract because they really want us to spend the money. Okay. Would there be any other specific projects that any one of the staff would like to report on? Um, also have a letter from the state um, on our allocations for the STP funding uh, from the NPO. Um, usually uh, they um, done an allocation, a four-year allocation. Uh, we had a, um, the four-year allocation of the $486,000 that we're working on still trying to get uh, the resurfacing project done. Um, we have got uh, into the second phase of the NEPA that is turned back over to the state. So we're just waiting on them to get back with us so we can proceed to design on, on the resurfacing project. Uh, but the state, uh, the federal um, highway administration has um, gave their next allocation for 2014 and we have $94,118 uh, in our STP funds um, that we can use for another project. Um, so if there's a project that you want to use this $94,000 on, which would have to, be, have to be on roads that is functionally classified as a collector uh, or above uh, that we can use this money on. And right now, the only roads that we have that are functionally classified as a real as a collector is uh, Chester, um, Cox Pike, and Cumberland. Um, we might can work with the state to reclassify or classify another road as as a collector. Uh, we'll just have to get something together and, and put it together and, and pro approach the uh, local programs office to ask them if they'll update our. Uh, uh, classification map and put whatever road that we may want to do some work on but 
that ninety-four thousand uh, dollars, we really need. If we got a project, we need to go ahead and get with the MPO to put it in uh, the tip. So that money's there that we can obligate to another project. Do you have a suggestion of other roads that might be in consideration? I talked to Keith earlier, uh, and he was. Um, um, I can't remember what road he was. Uh, what he asked, told me a while ago. But you already have Chester on the other MPO, right? No, ma'am. No. Uh, that's Cumberland and um, Dice Lample. Cumberland. Or Cumberland and Cox Pike from Northwest Highway to Dice Lample. Okay. Keith, you talking about the culvert on the left hand side going out? Yeah. Where it flooded so bad before? Where it flooded so bad before into there? Could we ask that y'all evaluate that and give a recommendation, being that you've got the $94,000 newly presented to where you could ask? Now, could you call other roads? Remember how you sent that off to the state and named them and that became that? Could we call other roads well, that's what that are not included right now? We, we have to present that to the local programs office. They have to evaluate it. And then they make that decision whether or not uh, they think that those classifications need to change. Um, what we did to be able to get Cumberland into uh, the, the mix to be able to do the resurfacing, we um, took Horn Tavern off the list and moved it to Cumberland. Uh, they, uh, most of the time, if you'll take a road off and want to replace it with a the road, they're more apt to do that than just add another road to a functionally classified road. So in comments to what Keith suggested, the culvert and Chester Road, first you said food line, then you, oh, Chester Road by food line. Okay, then that could be one suggestion for this new MPO, but could you suggest other roads that we might want to consider, such as Horn Tavern or other if, roads? If you want to consider those roads, then we'd have to go back to the local programs office to ask them to reclassify the road. Uh, which we can do that um, if that's you know what you want to do. You just we just need to make up our minds what project we want to do. Well, we've uh, already looked at Horn Tavern Road before, and there's a necessity there for widening some bridge work down through there. Right. Yes, I think it's very important. I'm um, not taking serious action already. And it's already been classified once, right? It it, it was classified before, um, and uh, mm -hmm. the reason why we didn't go after um, widening. That bridge was because of, of all the environmental that we was going to have to go through to even get the project started. Um, and the $94,000 is, is not a whole lot of money uh, that may uh, get the plans prepare, prepared for us, um, the design. It, it may be enough for, to do that, but of course it wouldn't be enough to do design, uh, all your environmental and construction, uh, the $94,000 would have been enough to do the whole project. So you have Cumberland, Chester, and Cox Pike. Yes. And you've identified the Chester, the culvert potential of necessity. Could y'all come back with a recommendation on that and the 94? Because to put in Horn Tavern, which I totally agree, Horn Tavern in Northwest needs attention. That may be something else with more money because right now the last MPO was how much? To the last MPO money was, was a four-year allocation, which was 486. 486, okay. Um, and because of all the changes through the Federal Highway Administration, they went to a one-year allocation instead of a four-year allocation. Okay. And we may or may not get another allocation in 2015. It's just if they pass another MAP 21 that puts the funding there. So if we have three roads identified and there is necessary work and this money could be used for that, that could be the wisest thing. I didn't know that we wouldn't get another 400 at some point thinking that's when we attack a whole new road. Yeah, and, and okay. I was, I was, that was one of the things that I was talking to uh, Congressman Mormon Blackburn with the last meeting that we had with her, all the changes in the Federal Highway Administration and only giving us a one year 
allocation instead of the four-year allocation because that's not a lot of money to really work with when you're wanting to either build new roads or you know maintain current streets so okay um, I'd request it with that new information and new grant money that you make a recommendation for us to see how we can address that to give you something to work with okay. then any other project conversation great moving forward new business 8a discuss and or take action on recommendation from the Planning Commission um, I want to make record that I have personal interest in the property being discussed and I will not participate in any voting if there be any administration I'll turn the meeting over to the vice mayor move to approve we have a motion for approval is there a second second any discussion on the matter Yes, sir. Uh, all we're asking for tonight is just for um, the attorney to draw up the, uh, the ordinance um, okay. for that. If, if y'all choose to, to move forward with it. Any Ooh. further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mayor, I relinquish the floor. Thank you, sir. New business 8B, discuss and or take action on bill 2013-24. Ordinance number 809 is an ordinance to amend the City of Fairview Municipal Zoning Ordinance Article 8, Overlay District Section 8-301, Article 8, 34, Floodplain District Regulations 8-302, Definitions, Article 837, Development uh, District Regulations 8-302, Definitions, Article 842, State Coordinating Agency 8-303 General Provisions 8-303.2 Basis for Establishing the Areas of Special Flood Hazard Article 8-43 Move for Approval Second Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried 8C was deferred 8D was deferred 8E Discuss and or take action on profile for city manager position from MTAS. I will make statement of apology from Mr. Broughton, and he had a standing appointment with a previous city that he's working with on other business matters. Wanted to uh, say apology to the board and to staff that he is not present, but wanted to present, I believe everyone received an email, multiple emails actually, an email of the profile and an email at a later date directly from him that was a uh, cover letter and the profile. So at this point, um, the dis discuss and or action on the profile. Move for approval. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I thought there was a note here. Yeah. Any discussion? In discussion, I'll just highlight the timeline of the city management recruitment that the BOC approved the position profile at the November 7th, 13, for the purpose of beginning for advertisement. Would be any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Also, in the discuss under action, there are in the cover letter, there were some questions, and we can um, move forward on voting if we are prepared, or we can definitely see where we need uh, further discussion. On the cover questions, one was a salary or a salary range. He did request that that be put in the advertisement. He had stated that we had discussed in several conversations that it would be um, discussed upon applicants there's dis there's several options discuss upon applicants um, put a range in so that way you can have a direct comment in the ad advertisement um, a specific number which that's not necessarily what I would think would be the definite so the floor is open for discussion on the salary and the purpose of posting it in the ad yes sir I would suggest that we use the salary range for that grade under our system. 
and could you give us in a number of a salary range if we go forward with I don't have it but I'm sure yes the financial officer would have it I have to have it for a different reason um, <laughs> step one is at 66,364 and the final step of 20 is 96,346 with the 66 to 96 does the board want to make a motion on a number or a number range I say the minimum should be 76 based on the current interims pay we're not going to hire somebody in less than department heads already so hey. 76 to 96 I'm comfortable 76 144 mm. would be the 76 thousand that's okay 76 does anybody have any other comments or injection I'm good with that is that a motion so moved second we have a motion and a second for a statement of a salary range for the city manager position of 76 to 96. Be any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The second discuss under action is in the uh, profile or in the advertisement. It does say a send to. Is there discussion or comments that um, MTAS receive the applications that are sent forth? Or is there an alter alternate option that we'd like to discuss? I'd like to see them come straight to the city. I don't want MTAS filtering those for, I want to see all the applicants that we get. We can still request all. I do believe that MTAS filtering and making sure that they have all the qualifications that we set forth is important. And if they're willing to do that for free, that does not take any staff time, is my comment on that. The only thing I've kind of thought through that is would we want to say we still want to see all of them, whether you look at them or not, it tends to be kind of second work, or would we want to see all local? To where maybe that's a different option of looking and my thought to that is if he vetted let's say we had 50 and he vetted and said these are you know top 12 my question would be was there anybody local that was not in the top 12 because I think it would be a little different look it's my opinion on a local even if maybe something doesn't match perfectly or th that's my thought so I would like to add that um, making a motion that all the applications are vetted through MTAS, but any local applicant um, be shared outside of that. What's the definition of local? I just meant city 37062. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. I, I kind of agree, I think, with Commissioner Sutton's comments. I don't want MTAS to, to he can look at them and I don't mind him being the mail drop. Uh, I think that that gives a one central point for somebody that has questions to contact since he put the profile. But I don't want him to eliminate anyone. I, if we get 51 applicants, I want to see 51 packages. And, and like he, can, he can go through them and He'd say. He can go through them and say, I like these 12. qualification lacks two qualifications, whatever. It is. But I, I still want to see all 51 applications. So would a, uh, us to do the vetting of who, who we talk to and who we don't. So mail to MTAS all applicants presented to commissioners. Right. With his, he certainly, like Commissioner Sutton said, he can review them and give us his thoughts. With recommendations. Yeah. But I still want to see them That, all. that alleviates that takes, my local part. So yes, yes. Okay. That takes care of your local concern. All right. Can I have that in the motion? I move, I move to do that. that. Motion to review all for all of them. Second. Mail to MTAS as point of reference and all applications to commissioners with MTAS recommendations. Or information of qualifications. Okay. Any other discussion? All right. And the third thing which in our interviews there was some mixture of these things and it may not be necessary that it's put in the ad so we can have further discussion about this if necessary 
but his comment was, is it vital, is it pertinent in the ad that the person is to live in Fairview and that they have residency in the city and is there a uh, variance for proximity, say two miles, 10 miles, 20 miles, whatever. So I want to discuss that. I know we have comments on that all across the board, but. I, I think we should, they should be required to live within the city. There be a variance of time frame before they have to comply with it if they are selected. I what about if they that. live four miles outside the city? That's not inside the city. I think we've already made that. Have we already said something about that prior to that? That they, that they need to live inside the city? If someone lives in the county and they're the perfect resident, I'm just, I, I don't agree. So we'll just Can you be the mayor discussion. and live outside the city? Even if it was one mile? You couldn't? And there's a reason for that. I understand. And if we need to discuss paying taxes, which that's another conversation that's been brought up, that might be an alternative of option because if the paying taxes and any move that's made reflects them being um, affected by something, then that could be discussed as well. But that, I just kind that of- That has been mentioned and I- I just kind of feel if someone lives two miles from City Hall and it happens to be a county, that to make them move is really unnecessary. I mean, I, I made the agreement with you before that I think within a certain area is okay, but then I looked at the fact that they will be making decisions for the city that will reflect on the people that live in the city, but not them if they don't live in the city. That's correct. I and I just, that. that could just be a conflict of mine. I see that. To, to me, I, I think it's priority that they would, if they have to move to take the job, they, yeah. they must move within the city limits. If they live close enough that they, it wouldn't be practical for them to move, then I, I think they have one of two alternatives. If legal, uh, if we can legally get to them, I think they have to request to be annexed, to be into the city. If we legally can't get to them, then I think they have to take or pay by, uh, uh, a reduced salary amount equal to what their property tax would be if they lived inside the city of Fairview. Is this something we want to decide this evening or do we need additional discussion? Do you feel like it needs to be in the ad or it's something that is an interview process? I think, I think they need to be told that they need to live in the city, but if it gets down to the actual interview in each individual person, we can tell them what we expect and what they can work out. Just like Alan said, if they're if we hire somebody from out of state, I understand. They, they need to they need they need to live here. I th I think we can make a general statement. I would offer this that we would say something generally. The uh, acceptable applicant will live within the city limits. The acceptable person candidate will live within the city limits. Within However, the time frame, huh? if uh, uh, an exception may be made for unusual circumstances. That's what I would say. Do you find it necessary that that be in the ad or in interview discussions? Well, I think you have to, if you don't put it in the ad, then anybody that's not willing to move that might be that local candidate that says I'm not moving into the city two miles out might not even apply. I'm so not sure it's not in the job description. So I, I, I mean, Looking generally there, speaking, I last time, last time we didn't have anybody that fell in that category. Okay. Hey. I don't, I don't disagree. I guess at this point, whether we call for a vote or it's in discussion and interviewing process, and it's I, not. You know, I, I don't, I don't. Uh, personally, if if I was in that point and wanted a job, I would apply anyway and hope I could convince somebody. Right. So I, I think to just require them to live here and then we try to work just something out see if they what do. happens. Yeah. I don't think there's probably, of course, I haven't looked, so this is just talking off my cuff, but I'm pretty sure that most cities would require their city managers to move and they're accustomed to mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Mayor, can yes. on the uh, previous item, the motion would, was to mail to MTAS, mm -hmm. did we have a second and a vote? Yes, 
I seconded it. Did we, did we vote? Yeah, we yes. voted. Okay. I missed yes, it. Thank you. Let's just make it simple. No, then. actually, you're right. You we no, vote? we didn't. She went on to another question. You're right. Mm. I thought we did. We can pull the tape later. <laughs> well, let's just do it again. <laughs> Clear it up now. Yeah. Right. Got, <laughs> it up I made now. the motion that we, that we send them forward all the applications to. Uh, and all applications come to commissioner oh. with recommendations from MTAS. Yes. I seconded it. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Double yeah, dip you. All right. Third item is residency. How would you like to address it? I just think uh, uh, the acceptable candidate will be expected to live inside, move to boundaries of the city. Within, yeah, within the city of Fairview. Period. Candidate to be resident of city boundaries. He'll have some wording, I'm sure, of how he wants. All right. Is that a motion? Move. move Second. To approve. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Those were the three items. Thank you. Do you have anything else that we'd like to address or uh, comments that I can give back to him in a report uh, to Mr. Jeff Broughton? All right. Added item is 8F, discuss and or action on audit workshop recommendations. The recommendations from the workshop we had from 5.30 to 6.45, we went over the audit. Uh, recommendations came forth that there was a necessity or a need for a uh, finance clerk. What are the wishes of the board? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? City Manager uh, Hall, you have um, understanding of salary. Job description, is there anything for this to come forth that you have questions or concerns you would like clarity on? They would uh, be reporting to um, Ms. Pewitt, who reports to you. They would be added a job description of finance clerk to the finance department. Okay. All clear on the comments? Yeah, I just, for the public, it's a recommendation from the auditors, and that's why it was discussed in the workshop that um, that we consider that. So I just know okay. not everybody come to the workshop. So Good clarity. Anything else? Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That will be posted on the website and inquiring for applications sent to city manager or uh, recorder attention, right? Yes, ma'am. City manager attention. Yes, ma'am. Item 8G, discuss and or take action on the approval of the audit from June 30th, 2013. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Item 9 is city manager items for discussion. Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board, Commissioners. Uh, the only item I have tonight is I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank the citizens of Fairview. And most of all, I'd like to thank the workforce that we have on hand. They have accepted me extremely well, and anything that I've asked, they've jumped to it, and there's laughter in the building, and in fact, I got a little jealous. I thought I needed to be in the laughter program myself, but anyway, that's my comment tonight, and I'm here again. I thank you, and these close to three weeks has been very enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Miscellaneous updates, staff comments. Okay. 
Thank you, Mayor. I'm here tonight. Chief Harris is a little under the weather, so he asked me to step in for him tonight. In the month of October, the police department handled 625 calls for service and activity. We had a total of 24 accidents for those involving injury, uh, and we're just maintaining what we're doing and, and trying to stay on top of what we're, we've got coming up for the holidays. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. We ran 63 calls last month, and although it, it just happened, I have one of the most important announcements of the year, but changing our clocks, change your batteries and your smoke detector. I got in a conversation with a citizen the other day, our smoke detector was malfunctioning, it wasn't a bad battery. Smoke detector is only good for 10 years. So if your house is 10 years older or you've purchased smoke detectors more than 10 years ago, they need to be replaced. They're not good forever. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other staff comments this evening? Um, Mayor, Vice Mayor, you have a copy of my report. Um, Planning Department, uh, we've uh, reviewed site plans for an addition uh, to the middle school of an auditorium, uh, site plan for a modification uh, for a, a drive through at the McDonald's, and a site plan for a Verizon cell tower. Uh, building Permit Department issued five building permits for the month of October. Uh, total construction cost of those permits was $80,572. Uh, issued 33 electrical permits. Plain department only received one complaint for the month. And we sent that to uh, the appropriate department uh, for resolution. Filled at 25 calls for service related orders. Report those to the proper departments for work to be completed. Uh, building codes department reviewed two commercial building plans for compliance. Uh, completed 20 building inspections. Issued five certificate occupancies. The codes violation department issued 25 or had uh, received 25 complaints uh, for the month of October. There were 32 uh, letters of violations sent out, two letters of failure to comply, and one citation written. Thank you, sir. Other staff comments this evening? City attorney comments. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have in my hand tonight, and I wanted to bring the, make the board aware of it, I will be turning this over to Ms. Teresa in just a few minutes, the fully executed copy of Addendum A to the Interlocal for the Joint Participation in the Funding of Future School Facilities by use of receipts received from the Adequate School Facilities Tax. In a way of, of refreshing everyone's memory, this was the document that, that was required for the city to be able to take whatever portion that the board decides to participate in the expansion of the public library uh, from the adequate facilities fund. Uh, as you recall, this had to, had to, was approved by this board, had to be approved by the county board, and fully executed and returned to me, and I'll be giving this to Ms. Teresa tonight. The only other thing I'd like to say, and, and you know, people are always, and I'm, I'm probably the most guilty of this of anyone, uh, if something happens that I don't like, I, I'm gonna let somebody know it. I think when something happens that, that was good, I think the person should get credit for it. And this is not only this document, but several things that I've worked on in, in the recent past with uh, Mr. Robert Bobby Cook of Burger Mosley and Carson, uh, this, the a firm that is the uh, county attorney. Uh, Bobby has really been easy to work with on these things. Uh, he and I both are required by the professional ethics to at least be professional, but he's gone beyond that and been very cooperative and to me showed a, a concern that uh, the county wanted to be sure that they cooperated with, with the city. And, and I appreciate that very much and just wanted to publicly acknowledge that and let this board know it and let the citizens know it that there are some people in the county that that know that Fairview's out here and uh, are willing to cooperate and try to ensure that 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 we're getting what we should be getting in. Like in this instance, it's not taking money out of their pocket, but if they didn't agree, you couldn't do it. And I know this library would be, it's something that I know this board is, is greatly concerned with and it would be a benefit to all the citizens. We have to go through, you know, all the hoops and dot the I's and cross the T's, but that has been done. So now it's back in your, uh, hands in the in the county commissioner's hands as to when and if 
if and when the library gets expanded in what amount this board votes to contribute to it, but you now have the authorization, and I will file it with Ms. Teresa tonight. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Communications from the commissioners? Commissioner Sutton? Uh, just two or three <coughs> things tonight. If, if you don't mind, Mayor, uh, I'd like to recognize uh, Judy Oxford, do you mind standing up just a second, please? Uh, the reason I'm asking her to stand up is she spent the time here all here tonight. Uh, Judy was a graduate from Fairview High School, am I correct? And she is one of several that is going to be running an important election next year uh, that will be coming up for our General Sessions judge position in this city. I think it's one of the most important positions that we have here, and I would like to thank her for coming out tonight. I think she's already spoken to... Uh, uh, Chief Harris, uh, I'd like to see everybody that's going to run for that office come out here and do the same thing, spend a little time with the city, spend a little time with Chief Harris, uh, because it is extremely important. And I just wanted to thank Ms. Oxford for coming out tonight and thank recognize you. that, that uh, she is from here per se. She graduated. What, what year did you graduate in? 90 what? That's not fair. Hey. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just in case you do get it and everything, I did, you remember me. But um, thank you again. Uh, the, the other thing was I have had discussions with Dr. Bass. Everybody knows Dr. Bass from the middle <coughs> school and the fine job that he did. He is now in charge of running the, uh, and I, I know I'm going to mess it up, going to run the middle college. Middle, middle college. college. It's not Franklin. It's just middle college. I was fortunate enough to go up there and spend a little time with him because we had had some ideas years ago about some things that we'd like to see going on down the road and was able to look at the school, to the school, and to find out that it, it is a, a fixture there for, uh, using his terms and mine too, it's for at-risk students of not made, possibly not being able to complete their educations in a normal school facility. Uh, for whatever reason, it, there's a difference in, in the attention that they need and whatever, and they get it there. Uh, it's, it's, it's children have a problem learning or attention span or uh, whatever the case may be. But I've seen a lot of kids there. They were very well behaved, and the, the teacher ratio can go from 1 to 15 to 1 to 20, and if necessary, down to 1 to 4. So it's very impressive that they, have, they don't have a lot of students, but they get a lot of attention. Of the students that go to school there, 20%, 19.5% of them come from the city of Fairview. And so my goal and what I'll be presenting with y'all in the future is the possibility of us using some of the school grant money, which I believe we can from what I've checked on, because it is a school that is associated with the city of Fairview, along with I'm trying to incorporate this into the other city governments within the county, because at this time there's only two that make contributions to that we're one of them and i think brent was the other one wake up over uh and and, and that money can be put in those portals and it, it is sorely needed up there um so i'll be getting you a lot more information on everything that you do there dr bass will be glad to come out here and talk to us he's going to be doing some presentations and i think with 20 percent of the people the kids children that go there that we have some responsibility to help them also along with the rest of the communities inside so that's what that was one of the things I was going to bring up to you, but I just didn't get all the information that I needed to properly do that. Um, the third and final thing that I have is please, everybody, remember Veterans Day. Uh, I said this last year at the same time, and this is somebody else is saying it's not mine, but it's freedom's not free. Uh, we have people, I think there was 9 or 19 killed today in a suicide bombing attack over there and just pray for their families and pray for the safety of, of all of them. Veterans and heroes are here every day. Our police department, our fire department, uh, the, every day, uh, we lose somebody in, in those departments. Then just all the branches of government, not just one, but many uh, are out there and we need to really thank them for the opportunities that we have to be here tonight and have a freedom of speech and to be able to stand up and, and express ourselves in this country because a lot of men died for it. A lot of women died for it. So just keep them in your mind and your prayers. There's a, there's a parade in Franklin starting at 8 o'clock Friday morning, tomorrow morning, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So going down there, going to have a lot of heroes and stuff down there in the line, a lot of veterans. So if you see one on the road or you find out one, tell them thank you for what they do. 
That's all I got. Thank you. Vice Mayor Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Lavorn, do you have any knowledge as to Mrs. Staley's comments during citizens' comments on her letter she received today from the city? I do not, um, but I'll check into it first thing in the morning. Uh, the one that I was going to ask, he got up and left just a few minutes ago. I'm sure that's the one that actually sent the letter. Larry, do we have any any restrictions on what we can and can't tell people they can do based on religious practices? Not uh, on religious practices per se, but uh, you know you can't dictate what somebody's religion is. But there's a difference in, in a religious practice and violation of a policing statute. It was mentioned mentioned here some years ago when we implemented the no burn policy in the in the city, and you couldn't have fires and such. And it was told to us at that time that if uh, a group of people were around a fire and they were holding church or reading scriptures or whatever that we couldn't make them put that fire out even though we had an ordinance here saying that you couldn't have a fire were we this was before your time were we instructed improperly in that or would that still be the case I don't uh, of course I haven't looked I haven't looked at, at that specifically but uh, you know, it, it would it would be a, an iffy situation if that fire was endangering something. Uh, I can't hide behind a uh, religious thing and, and say I'm going to set a fire in the middle of the floor here. Right. Uh, it, you you can't, and I don't mean to say hide behind, it, but I can't use that as a shield. Okay. Um, because if if it's truly a religious practice and it doesn't endanger the public, then that's one story. If it's something under the policing statute that that uh, you you can't have this, I can't light a fire beside a gas tank. Then making difference what my religion is because you get into the to the the enforcement of the policing statute for the safety and, and welfare of everybody around. Uh, you'd have to balance it against what they were doing, what the what the potential danger was. Uh, extremely dry. You can't set it out in Bowie Park in the leaves. Right that type of thing. So your answer, your, the answer would be, in some instances, maybe, in some instances, absolutely not. Okay, you got it. Don, when you check in the morning as well, could you report back to us at the next meeting uh, those findings and uh, possibly look into the, the three letters that she was sent and the first one, I guess she fixed the problem, but I think now she can return those back again the uh, the second one being the pool and evidently she was not in violation even though they said we we said that she was and then how we handle handle this one yes sir um, I, I can say that it, it didn't have anything to do with her having chickens is the reason why she got she's not being picked on uh, I know that to be a fact um, because we don't really have a preference for whether or not there's uh, chickens allowed or not we're just trying to enforce the codes that we have on our books so um, and we enforce that code equally uh, okay. amongst everyone that we know is in violation of the code so. but I will check into it okay. and report back to you thank next you month, sir next meeting uh, last thing mayor uh, mr. Hall thank you very much for your two and a half weeks almost three weeks that you've put in here I know you've been put through the test and I just want to make it known that I have had multiple city employees call me or stop me and thank us for the decision that we made in putting him in this position and they are they are very happy with that decision and uh, I hope he continues to do a good job that's all thank you Commissioner Bissell no ma'am I don't have anything not. Commissioner Carroll um, not to beat a dead horse, but Don, when you do discuss one of the issues that I have with this, um, I understand Coates has got to do their job and this is what you've been tasked to do. But I do feel like that I don't understand why we had to go back three times in a three to six month period 
why if that was all there, why we didn't address it all at once. So I worry that I see how it could appear to a citizen like they're being targeted. So I really want you to look into the um, situation um, because I think if somebody wrote me um, letters three different times and then if I've, I've talked to um, her a couple times and the first time it's not real visual so if you're going up on the property or how I, I'd like some more details about because I just feel like if they were in violation of three different things it should have been determined that first time so I, you know I can see how a citizen would feel that way and so just if you'll get some clarification because I really don't want any citizens to feel like that we're personally attacking them. Now, your job is a hard job, and I mean, we want as a whole, the community, you to do your job. Obviously, it's there for a reason. Well, before we was tasked to step up our property maintenance mm -hmm. uh, enforcement, typically the enforcement was probably 95% driven by complaints. Now, of course, since we've been tasked to step up our property maintenance, that ratio is probably down, you know, to 50% now. Uh, so it could be that there were complaints filed that we had to follow up on. Okay. And so that may be the reason why they didn't catch some of the stuff in the first citation. They got a call and they had to, you know, get another perspective of the property to see something else. But I'll check into it. And so y'all do document, like if somebody calls who yes, um, calls and complains. Okay, well, just follow up on that because, I mean, like I said, I just, listening to this, I would feel the same way, and personally. I'd feel like somebody was, um, you know, had something personal. As far as the religion, um, I take it, and of course, you know, we could talk after, that it was more of a sentimental thing you're not out having church in the hot tub or whatever i don't know you might be i'm just saying but it's a sentimental um thing and so i i did want to clarify that but um <laughs> sorry um i <laughs> i'm sorry i just got tickled at that she shook her head <laughs> so um Anyway, um, also just wanted to thank the city um, interim city manager, um, doing a great job, and um, appreciate you being so diligent, trying to get in and see what needs to be done and follow up on um, some projects and just jump right in there. I think you um, got thrown in pretty quickly and uh, <laughs> um, had some big projects on the first uh, week, so. Anyway, I just really appreciate um, your efforts and also like Commissioner Sutton want to um, give my thanks to the veterans and um, all the people, um, the families that have lost and um, just take the time to use the day to do what it's supposed to do and um, give thanks to the military. Yes, sir. Can I just ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Uh, is it important to y'all, I, I noticed this, on everything Wayne's signing, he's signing his interim city manager. Do we really need the interim? I mean, I, I, I mean, we all know he's interim, and we know it's, you know, that thing, but I don't think there's any legal precedent, is there, Larry, that he has signed the interim? I, I think you would have to, uh, to it, that's his, he's not the city manager, it's interim and on Does legal need documents. to leave it on there? He need to leave okay. it on there, yeah. Well, I, that because was my question, thank you. You don't have confusion. I would it make much. the document invalid? Probably not, but I wouldn't want it to attack for that reason. I, I'm good with that. Just curious. I would like to say thank you for the attention of the citizens. It's really encouraging to see that people are plugged in and concerned. I thank you very much. Your comments are always welcome. Great job this week and last week too, Wayne, and the, cities, the um, citizens over at Fernvale Heights have said thank you for taking care of their road. It was... Um, long overdue thank you for that commitment and i would just like to mira thank you to the persons who have served in our military and who are currently serving in our military here and abroad we are very thankful for the freedoms that we have there'd be nothing else i'll ask for motion for adjournment
All those in favor? Good evening.